If you've worked with React Native for any amount of time, you've likely run into a confusing issue of how to actually navigate around your app. It's a pretty core piece of any app, um, but it's not always been the easiest to do within React Native. I personally have gone through uh, Navigator iOS, Navigator, React Native Router Flux, Navigation Experimental, EX Navigation, all of these different solutions, all with their benefits, all with their drawbacks, and it's just a lot to take in, a lot to decide, especially if you're new uh, to the React Native ecosystem. Fortunately, we're kind of converging on a single package that will deprecate, deprecate all of these other navigating solutions in favor of React Navigation, which takes uh, things learned from all of these different packages in the past, all these different components, and brings all of this knowledge into one place, one strongly supported community slash core uh, navigation solution. And I want to take some time today just to do a first look at it and set up some basic um, navigation options with it. So we'll be covering how to set up a few different tabs. We'll be setting up how to do what's called stack navigation. So going from one screen to the next to the next and so on, as well as setting up a modal and how you actually do that. Uh, modals are simple in concept, but in practice I've found with other solutions they can be kind of uh, confusing and intimidating to actually get set up, so we'll work on that as well. Before we actually dive into putting together the code and setting up these navigators, I want to give you a brief overview of what this project is. Um, all the code is available on GitHub. I'll have a link down in the description as well as to the blog post that goes along with this. It's just a text version of this video. This project, as you can see, we've got these four different screens. Um, these are all put together already using data. That's not the focus of this, so I won't be covering you know, what actually goes in those screens. You can run through uh, the GitHub repo if you want to know exactly what those are. But this project, basically it's going to be basically like a contact list app. We've got a list of users. We can go from this list to uh, details. And then we've also got a me tab, which is going to be user data that basically represents the current user. So in this project, we're actually using React Native Elements to do all the, the design and then random user generator data to uh, actually populate our list. And of course, we'll be using React Navigation to handle our navigation. So the first thing we're going to set up is our two tabs. One tab is going to represent our feed screen, and the other one's going to represent our me, our user detail uh, screen or tab. So to do that, we're going to need to import a few things first off. Uh, first is React, very normal. The next up is a tab navigator from React Navigation. And the tab navigator is what's going to uh, take our configuration, which we'll write in a moment, and actually turn that into a component that renders tabs like you would expect on iOS and Android. Next up is the icon from React Native Elements, and that's going to be used to actually display the icon for each tab on iOS. Finally, we're importing the two relevant screens for right now. Feed is going to represent the feed. Me is going to represent the me tab. So with that stuff done, we can actually go ahead and start writing our navigator. So say export const tabs and then this tabs navigator is going to take an object for the first parameter and this object within that it's going to take a seri series of key and value pairs and each key represents a screen so we'll say feed and me okay and within these objects that represent each screen in addition to a bunch of other options which we're not going to cover here we can define what the screen is. And the screen is going to be the component that should actually be rendered for that tab. Here it's going to be feed, and then down here it's going to be me. So if I save that, that's all defined. Now we actually need to render this tabs component. And the result of tab navigator is just like any other component. So you can see I've imported tabs from uh, a router file and then I'll just take that just like any other component be it a view text whatever I'll write that okay save it and forgot that s so once I add that you can see I've got uh, my list of users and I've got my me tab so I can go ahead and switch back and forth between those now since we're testing everything out on iOS first you'll see that down here normally you would expect a icon to show up above the text feed and the text me. This isn't going to be any different. We'll go ahead and define that now. And when you're defining uh, navigation options, you're able to do it in two places. First, you can actually do it on the screen itself via a static 
navigation options. And though this works, it's not my preference, and this is just personal opinion, I like to keep all of my navigation related stuff uh, together in one place. So I like to define all of that along with the tab navigator. So inside of here, I can again say navigation options, and this takes a host of options um, beyond what we're going to be using it for. But for the tab bar, we can then, inside of the navigation options object, we'll pass another object called tab bar, and that'll tell us, or we're able to uh, define exactly what this tab bar is going to look like. And in this case, just for future and just to keep everything um, consistent and clear, we'll define the label, and that label is going to represent you know, what the label is for that tab. We're also going to define the icon. The icon, we have a little bit more control over it. Uh, the icon can be a function, and inside of that, we're actually given the tint color. So uh, you can go ahead and customize that however you want. And we'll be using the color to actually define what color that component should be when it's currently active or when it's inactive. So with that, we're going to start using our icon component that we imported before. And if you're not familiar with React Native Elements, uh, there's a few things we can do. First off, we're going to define the name of the icon that should be rendered. And in this case, it's going to be list. We're going to set a size. And then finally, we'll set the color, which is where we'll use that tint color. All right, so that's our navigation options for our feed tab. And we want to do the exact same for me, just using a different tab. Uh, a different icon. So in this case, everything's going to be the exact same. We're just going to switch out uh, list with account circle. And then we're also going to change the label to me to represent that properly. So I save that, refresh it, and you can see that the feed and the me icon, those are uh, updated and it's using the default colors for the tint colors right now, which you can um, customize if you choose. Check out the React Native documentation to actually see how to do that. As it stands, the list view items, when we click them, it doesn't do anything. There's not a, a navigation bar that you come to expect. Um, so that's what we're going to take care of now. And we'll do that through a stack navigator, which much like tab navigator is a product of React navigation. So we'll import that exactly the same way. And we'll be using the stack navigator to kind of supplement this feed tab. And this feed tab is going to Inside of the tab, we'll have a stack navigator. So that's something to note with React Navigation is that you can actually uh, nest these different navigators inside of it uh, to cre create the user interface that you actually need for your app. So with that in mind, we've got the stack navigator um, imported. We're also going to import our user detail from same place. So now uh, we're going to create uh, what I'm going to call the feed stack. And just like the tab navigator, it takes an object for uh, its configuration. And this time, we're going to have this feed, so exactly the same thing that we currently have defined in our tabs, we're going to define here. So we'll say feed, and we'll give it the screen of feed. Okay, and then the other tab, which we haven't actually seen, or the other screen that we haven't yet seen, is user detail. And then that screen, as you may have guessed, is going to be user detail. Now to actually use the speed stack that we've got, uh, we need to go ahead and replace the screen tab screen with our new stack navigator, nesting navigators, like I said we could uh, before. So at this point, once I save this, we'll have a stack navigator inside of our tab navigator on our feed screen. So go ahead, save that. And you can see, although it doesn't show up too well right now on iOS, we've got this um, navigation bar. And to make it actually, you know, functional and to display the correct data, just like with the tabs, we'll be using navigation options. Um, and to display the title, we want to use the title uh, key. And that'll tell the stack navigator to display this as a title. And one way we can do this is just to return um, a string. And in this case, we'll say feed. And when we return that, you can see that feed actually shows up in the title. Now before we get to the actually going to the user detail screen, we're going to again set up a title. This way we're, we're going to do it a little bit differently, a little bit more complex, 
and a little bit more customized. So whenever we navigate to a user detail screen, rather than having some static text, we'll actually use the user's name in the title. So rather than a string, we can actually return a function. And inside of that function, we have access to the navigation state. And uh, the state is passed, we'll show you that in just a moment, but the state is passed when you actually navigate to a screen. And with that, we can access all of that data passed to it via state.params. Um, and that's what we'll use to actually generate the title bar. So here I've just typed everything out. The data, we'll see that in a moment, and you can kind of look at the actual data itself to see how everything's structured. But we're passing along the entire user object, which has a, a name dot first, at representing the first name. We're converting that to an uppercase, and then we do the same thing for the last name and just return a string from this function. So go ahead and save that. That means the title is going to be set up for our user details screen when we actually uh, navigate to that. So to actually navigate to our user details screen, we need to jump over to our feed.js file, which is one of our screens. And whenever we press on one of these row items, this onlearn more function is going to be called. And this onlearn more function is passed the current user. So if I click on Jacob Wilson, all of his user data is going to be passed to um, this function. And at this point, whenever you define a, uh, a screen and you pass a component to it, that component's then going to have a this.props.navigation. And that's coming from either the stack navigator or the tab navigator. And with that, we can actually access it. So this.props.navigation. And one of the things on navigation itself is a function called navigate. And this is what we use to progress between different screens. And in that, the first parameter for this function is actually the key of the screen we want to go to. So in this case, we want to go to the user details screen. We'll pass that in. And then the next thing is any parameters you want to pass to it. So as I talked about before, that state.params. That's where this is going to come from. And in this case, we want to pass all of the user data onto the next screen so that we can actually generate that detail view. So if I go ahead and save this, let my editor refresh, and I actually go and click one of these rows, you can see that you know all of this data, which is this user's data, is passed to the next screen. We're using it to actually generate the appropriate title uh, in the navigation bar. And just so you can see how we access this data beyond just the title, I'll jump over into the user detail. You can see that any data I need is available at this.props.navigation.state dot params. It's not exactly the most succinct thing to access, but it means that we can you know, access any data passed to it easily. And once you read the documentation, although it's a fair amount to type, it makes sense the way everything's organized and just consolidated in a simple to use way. The final thing we're going to do is actually set up a modal. So this modal is going to come up and it'll cover over this tab bar, um, anything else that's on the screen, regardless of what screen the user is actually on. And to do that, we're going to have to jump back into our router file. And this time, to create a modal, we'll uh, actually create another stack navigator. That's all a modal is when using uh, React navigation. So we're just going to say export const root. This is going to be our root navigator. And I'll just kind of type more this time because we've already uh, explained everything. But one of the screens for this root navigator is going to be our tabs, which we defined before, and that's our tab navigator we currently see. And the next is going to be settings. Um, and that's, that's going to be the screen that actually pops up when we go to um, our modal. And that'll be our screen settings, which I need to jump up here and actually import that from our screen. So save this. We're not actually using it yet. And before we do, we're going to pass a few options to it that actually makes it look like and function like a modal. And you can pass options to a stack navigator as the second parameter. And that second parameter is also going to be an, uh, an object. So the first thing we need to do to make it act like a modal, which means rather than bring new screens in from right to left, we'll bring them from bottom to top. And to do that, we'll say mode modal. And that's all we have to do here to actually get that correct interaction. And then the other thing we want to do, just because this is a root navigator, we don't know 
you know, how this will evolve. And we want to be able to allow our children, navigators, to, to handle everything they need to. Um, we're going to set the header mode to uh, none. And that's going to mean that for the stack navigator, no navigation bar that we're like what we're seeing here is going to show up. Otherwise, we would have two navigation bars on top of each other, and it just wouldn't look right. So those are the two things we actually need to do in the navigator, uh, defining that to have our modal set up. Once we save that, the final thing we need to do is hop on over to our uh, index.js, and we'll replace this tabs with our new root no navigator. And if I save it, everything looks exactly the same, which is what we would expect, because the, the tabs navigator is the first uh, key in there. That means it'll be the first screen to find unless we were to change that. So to actually get our modal to pop up, we'll jump over to this me screen. And I've already typed this out, but I'll show you. Basically, when we press the settings tab, the, the new screen will show up. So if I press this, you can see that the settings tab shows up exactly like we would expect it to. And you can swipe down to actually close it, just like you would expect. Now you can see there, this is a scrolling view, and it can be a little bit tough to actually work with. So one thing I want to do to fix that and make it a little bit, and just really demonstrate that you can you know, nest navigators as deeply as you need to, we'll just go ahead and, just like we did earlier, We'll create another stack navigator, and this is going to represent our settings screen. So imagine you had, um, if we actually had things to go to notifications, profile, password, you'd expect those to come in from right to left. So we can, again, use a normal stack navigator. So I'm just going to say settings stack as a new stack navigator, just like every other time we've done this. And then the screen is going to be settings. So super, super simple, like we've seen before. And then the final thing we need to do is replace the settings screen in our root navigator with our new stack navigator. Save that, jump over to the me tab, settings, and you can see that that tab bar does show up. So let's actually add those navigation options. Settings. Okay, save everything. And you can see that we've got that normal kind of that feed stack. So if you were to add a new screen for notifications and so on, you can actually navigate normally. So you would say this.props.navigation.navigate to notifications or however you want to work with it. So most, if not all, people using React Native, in addition to creating an iOS app, they're going to want to create an Android app. And obviously, React Navigation is aware of that and therefore it works on iOS and Android, um, as well as everything that we just wrote. So if I go ahead, close this, you can see I've got an Android simulator uh, running just behind it. And I'll need to refresh this. So I'll do so here, reload it. And you can see, rather than the bottom tab bar, which is a normal pattern on iOS, we've got a tab top uh, tab bar on Android, which is a common pattern for Android. And you can go between the tabs. You've got that normal interaction Android users have come to expect. We can go ahead, navigate into the next tabs. And we're also able to use the hardware back button on many Android devices to go to the previous screen. And finally, uh, we'll do the settings. You can see everything works the way you would expect it to on both iOS and Android. All right, and that's it for our first look at React Navigation. If you've got any further questions about it, about React Navigation or React Native in general, leave a comment below. I'd be happy to help you out. There's also a link to an email list in the description box. If you're interested in any tips, tricks, tutorials on how to build apps with React Native, sign up for that there, and I'll send you all that uh, information and any new tutorials as they come out. Thanks for watching this. Hope you found it helpful, and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next video.